It's time for Secure Starts presented by Visa for Peace of Mind Online. Visa's got you covered. All right, so it's time for Adam Ranks. Week three starts and sits for the whole list. You can find them at NFL.com slash start sit. But uh, the quarterback spot, looking at a couple of guys playing, I guess, east of the Mississippi. Is it? Yeah, let's start with Ryan Tannehill. And ever since he's taken over that job as the quarterback of the Tennessee Titans, he's been fantastic. Miracled them all the way into the playoffs last year. And, of course, they had an extended FC championship game season. He's picked right back up and has been a good quarterback. He's been one of the top fantasy options. And it's really time to just accept that this is a good fantasy quarterback. He should be in your lineups to start him this week. And another quarterback we need to accept as a good player is Josh Allen. And I don't know, and I, I got to put this out there, and I tried to explain to Buffalo Bill fans, I'm a fan of your quarterback. I do love him. I was just saying that teams are going to try to test him to make him throw the football. And what we're seeing with him throwing the football is really good. He's made quite a connection with Stephon Diggs. He's getting the ball. Like, that, that was a lucky throw, but whatever. Like, listen, he's <laughs> making the throws that needs to be that need to be made. And he still has that presence of mind that when he needs to run the ball, he certainly can. A quarterback that throws for 400 yards and four touchdowns and still is giving you running ability is somebody you start each and every week. And I would never think about it for the rest of the for the rest of the year. I mean, look, Josh Allen's been a top 10 quarterback the last couple of years, and somehow we still sort of discount him. Maybe at some point, you just buy in that, that this is just who he is right now. Uh, Kenyon Drake has embraced the fantasy Twitter community, uh, and I'm, I'm sort of here for it. I, I see you are embracing him as one of your week three starts. Oh, I love Kenyon Drake, and I think that you're absolutely right. He told people on Twitter that if you're upset with my fantasy production, why don't you release me and somebody in your league will enjoy what I'm doing. And I love it because it makes him feel like he's part of our crew. Like when I saw Colleen Wolf walking around with an Empire Strikes Back t-shirt, I'm like, yeah, Wolf, what up? <laughs> Star Wars fans. And so I look at what he did last week, and certainly you want more than eight. Listen, I understand you want 50 points from your running back every week, but you can't ask for anything more than a running back who's carrying the ball 20 times in this offense. The touchdowns are volatile. They are going to be there at some point, and they're going to come through. Uh, and then uh, David Montgomery, I, I, I'm starting to buy oh, back shoot. in. I'm, I'm starting to buy back in on David Montgomery. I should have gotten myself to David Montgomery That's there. That's okay. So I apologize. That's what I'm but I, I do like him. I, I know. Like, this is, you know, people were like, oh, you died on the David Montgomery Hill last year. And I'm like, you know what? He was uh, he was fine. I think the circumstance with the injuries to the Bears offensive line kind of hurt them a little bit. But he's a good running back. And I think what we saw in the touchdown that he had against the Giants on Sunday was what we want from him and Mitch Trubisky, where Mitch kind of extended the play, rolled out, found David Montgomery, who was near the, here, we'll watch this play here. I believe this is the touchdown. So he's near the sideline, cuts it back, gets into the end zone. What more do you want? I mean, that's exactly what we get. And I think that the Bears are probably going to start running the ball even more. The, the offensive line looks a lot more improved than what happened than what we saw last year. So I'm encouraged, especially this week going up against the Atlanta Falcons. All right, uh, wide receivers. You got two guys that are uh, they're facing off against each other this week, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, no. and I'll start with the Dallas Cowboys, and, and C.D. Lamb is kind of taken over as the number two guy. Like he's he's the the person in like it's a it's a buddy movie, and C.D. Lamb is all of the, is the new person who all of a sudden becomes the best friend of the mean girl, and it's a thing. And Michael Gallup's left down in the cold, but whatever. What we've seen out of CeeDee Lamb has been pretty impressive. He's averaging seven and a half recept targets per game, excuse me. And being a huge part of this offense, obviously Amari Cooper is the number one receiver, the most targeted guy here. Ezekiel Elliott is running the ball, but CeeDee Lamb is now the number two guy there. Last week had 106 receiving yards. And again, the touchdowns will be volatile. He's going up against the Seattle Seahawks who give up a lot of production to the wide receiver. And speaking of which, and we'll just talk about DK Metcalf. This is probably going to be the last time that I mention him in the in the start and sit column because he has become so automatic. He's the wide receiver eight on the season. We love Tyler Lockett. And one of the benefactors of letting Russ cook is that both of these receivers can go out there and be productive assets for you. Again, they were guys that you were always relying on to get touchdowns. There was, it was a small sample size, but DK Metcalf not only getting into the end zone, but also putting up the yards.
Yeah, uh, I mean, DK, it was, it was sort of a, a coin flip for me. But like, do I want DK? Do I want Tyler Lockett? I split the difference and sort of went with both, depending on the league and, and how the draft shook out. And uh, so far, I'm not unhappy about it. Uh, tight ends. Uh, you got a, one young guy, one old guy who's sort of back in our lives now. Yeah, Tyler Higby was somebody who came on at the end of last season and everybody was really impressed with what he was able to do, kind of usurp all of Cooper Cup's production, taking over for him. And in week one, it didn't quite work out. But what we saw in week two is the most encouraging thing is that anytime the Rams get near the goal line now, I expect them to be running two tight end sets, throwing the ball to Tyler Higby. For years, it had been Todd Gurley who was an automatic play inside the five. But I think with some questions at the running back position, they're going to turn to Tyler Higby. And the old guy you were referring to is Jimmy Graham, which again, I know I'm putting two bears out here and I look like a homer and I understand that. But watching this game last week, you kind of saw how the Bears want to use Jimmy Graham. And it's very similar to what Kansas City does with Travis Kelsey. Now, obviously, I would rather have Travis Kelsey. I'm not comparing the two. But the role is very similar. And in week one against Detroit, if Jimmy Graham hadn't missed timed a couple of jumps, he would have had a monster performance. And what I saw against the Giants was also equally as encouraging. You see right there, eight targets in this game. That's all we can ask for. Target your tight end. We will start that player. Some weeks it works out, some weeks it doesn't. Just give us the opportunity. I mean, when you have like 15 tight ends on your roster, the chance of one stop? of them They've caught hitting a bunch of those guys. is going to be pretty good. Uh, and then finally, your defenses to start. Uh, not really any surprises uh, with these two defenses you got. I went very chalky on this one. We'll start with <laughs> Pittsburgh Steelers. Obviously, one of the best defenses in the league. They have the best Watt brother. I think we can say that with certainty. Wow. And what? Do you not watch? The, like, TJ should have been the defensive player of the year last year. Like, that guy was amazing. But since the beginning of the 2019 season, they have led the NFL in takeaways and sacks. So, again, this matchup against the Texans, Deshaun Watson is the most sacked quarterback in the NFL, which I know would be surprising to hear for a lot of people. But he's been sacked 10 times this season. And of course, the San Francisco 49ers, again, on the East Coast, going up against the New York Jets, even without Bosa and Thomas. I don't think Adam Gase has figured it out enough to be like, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll master this. I'll master this one. No, the 49ers still have one of the best defenses in the league, even though it'll, you know, it'll hurt not having Nick Bosa out there. But I think any time that you can stream it or pick up it, obviously you can't do it this week because San Francisco is probably already on somebody's roster. But any time you can look out and see Who's playing the Jets and go and pick up that team? By the way, the Colts are going to be that team next week. So if the Colts are available on your waiver wire and you can kind of hold them there, the Colts are a very good fantasy team and are not a bad option this week either. But if you want to pick them up and, and have a little forward thinking to next week, just, you know, sometimes the best opportunity here is just playing a little defense ahead of time and get them already on your roster. Yeah, I think especially if you uh, are in a league where you have a low waiver priority and you're not going to get one of the top waiver wire picks, uh, think ahead. Just try and, and bolster your roster for a week or two down the line. Always a, a good way to look at it. There you go. That was Secure Starts, presented by Visa. So we've done the starts. Now we have to do the sits. And I know people will accuse you of being a Bears homer. It's not the first time. But oh. you are picking a quarterback to sit that is facing the Bears this week. Yeah, it's tough because I really hesitated because I feel like any time I put out there that Matt Ryan is a sit, he's going to go, you know, put up 5'11 on this team <laughs> with four touchdowns and everything. But Julio Jones is battling a hamstring injury right now, not that it matters because Calvin Ridley has been so good. But the Bears defense has actually been getting after the quarterback, and that has been one of the things the Falcons have had to work on over the last couple of years is improving the offensive line. But I think that if the Bears, I don't know if they'll ever call a holding penalty because it seems like Khalil Mack is held every every time. Like, But Bobby Quinn came in and made immediate impact, strip sack fumble on his first play as a Chicago Bear. So I think this is his, listen, with guys like Gardner Minshew still out in the league, like I'd rather, I'd feel safer going with Gardner in this one than hoping that you can get a good performance out of uh, Matt Ryan there. And Kirk Cousins, I think you just need to like never start him. This is <laughs> this is bad. Like this this Viking situation is pretty sad. And I know that I put predictions out every year, and people will be like, "You are terrible at this." But I was actually ahead here, saying like this Vikings team is not as good as you people want to believe that it is. Not having Stephon Diggs is a bigger issue than people want to believe that it is. 
Kirk Cousins making mistakes, the defense not being as ferocious as it once was. It's time to time to move on from Kirk Cousins. Even in two quarterback leagues, I don't feel great about it. Uh, running back, you got a couple of guys who were big in week one, were sort of meh in week two, and now you got them as sits for week three. You know what's funny is when I sent out this email, I had Clyde Edwards Alaire. And if you go read my column this week, he's not listed there because I'm a coward and I don't <laughs> want to face that heat. But I'll do it with you, Marcus, because I think that it's important to talk about is that he was good in week two, but he wasn't as great as he was in week one. And now he's got a matchup against the Baltimore Ravens where you look at it and you're like, I don't know that I can trust it. Now, obviously, if you're if you're somebody like me who is starting Miles Gaskin on Thursday night, I would kill to have Clyde Edwards Alaire in my lineup. I really would, but I think for daily fantasy is is where I'm trying to to make this case of be careful. And I think too, we're starting to see Andy Reid get a little creative with his usage at the running back position. So he might not be as bell cowy, bell cowy as we want him to be. And another guy though, I'm gonna avoid as well. Let's talk about David Johnson. Now he had a great, I got auto picked David Johnson in a league that I play with my friends who, by the way, there was a draft on a Wednesday night. I had the number one overall pick and all of a sudden they see that I'm not there. Not one person thought to text me and be like, hey bro, like the tiny football league's drafting tonight. Do you want to to jump in? Like you already got Chris and my team looks great because I got, well, McCaffrey, Josh Jacobs and Travis Kelsey as my first three picks was like, okay, I would have done that. I got Russell Wilson, love that because this league is really quarterback heavy. And I have David Johnson and I was livid. I'm like, (laughs) I was just on a show with Marcus bragging about the fact that I have no shares of David Johnson. You guys are making me look like an idiot, which I do fine on my own. And now after that, that week one, I was trying to trade him so like I was offering him to everybody. <laughs> Nobody wanted to take a take a bite on this because, well, first of all, they know if it's me, they're probably I'm trying to ruin them. I'm like, no, I'm I'm trying to trade him for Miles Gaskin right now. But the thing is, is uh, I, I, I don't like this matchup. The Steelers, I talked about streaming their defense, mm-hmm. like streaming their defense. But you're starting the Steelers defense. Right. It's not going to be great. <laughs> all right. Uh, so wide fun. receivers. Uh, Hollywood Brown, Cooper Cup, eh, you're not feeling them this week, huh? Yeah, I, I, you know, the Ravens still run the football, and the Chiefs are a better team, a better team defensively than people give them credit for. And I think that Marcus Peters, who plays for the Ravens, that wasn't going to make a lot of sense. But I was going to say they're able to, sh- they're able to shut down uh, opposing wide receivers. So Marquise Hollywood Brown hasn't really broken out the way that we wanted him to. We thought like, hey, you know, Lamar Jackson wants to throw the ball a little bit more this season. You know, let's let's get shares of Hollywood Brown, and it hasn't really come to fruition, and don't feel that it's going to be this week either. And Cooper Cup goes back to the conversation we had about Tyler Higby, where Higby is their guy when they get near the goal line. That's where Cooper Cup really thrived last season, because he was getting some opportunities in the red zone. Tyler Higby seems to have taken that spot from him. So now what we saw out of Cooper Cup on Sunday against the Philadelphia Eagles is really the best we can hope for. It's like, oh, he gets a lot of targets. He gets close to or over 100 yards and we get double digit fantasy points from him. He's another player that I would really, really would love to unload at some point because I just feel the Rams are really focused in on Higby and of course our guy, Bobby Trees. Uh, tight end, you got two guys who play their home games in the state of New Jersey, even though they say New York on their teams. It's true. And Chris Herndon is somebody that we keep waiting to break out. We're like, yeah, this is our guy. This goes back to last year. We thought that even though he was going to miss the first four games of the season, that he was going to come out and do some things. Hasn't really come to fruition this year. Not working out as well. It's it's it, I'm starting to I'm starting to believe that Adam Gase might not be the best coach. Like, I don't know. Like, I, know, <laughs> I don't want to be too. I don't want to be too premature here. But and another guy who I'm not enthused about this week because the matchup is really tough is Evan Ingram. And he is somebody that I look at with this Giants offense without Saquon Barkley. I hope at some point that he's going to come and he's going to step up and he's going to be a leader on this team. I really do believe that he needs to be the guy, probably more than anybody else. Even they signed, even though they signed Devonta Freeman and all that stuff, Evan Ingram needs to be the guy who comes up and produces. But the matchup this week for the Giants is not good for tight ends. So I'm probably going to have to avoid him if possible.